Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area, beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials, and only after careful review by state agencies with the expertise to assess risks and the efficacy of these proposals with input from the public. <coughs> Now, we support 6011 for the following reasons. First and foremost, Bill 6011 is necessary to protect human health and safeguard the environment. The 1991 patent, now owned by Raytheon, proposed seeding the atmosphere with metallic particles such as aluminum oxide. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Exposure to high levels of aluminum can result in respiratory and neurological problems, possibly including Alzheimer's disease. Geoengineering methods also propose seeding the atmosphere with sulfate aerosols, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to sulfur dioxide affects the lungs, and at high levels may result in burning of the nose, throat, breathing difficulties, and severe airway obstructions. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide is the worst. Again, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, a few breaths of air containing high levels of hydrogen sulfide can cause death. Lower, longer-term exposure can cause eye irritation, headache, and fatigue. Now, unless engineering poses serious risks for the environment as well. Geoengineering techniques may alter precipitation patterns, produce droughts, increase acid rainfall, Aerosol particles sprayed into the atmosphere could accelerate ozone depletion or reduce the total sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface, surface, impact agricultural production, or reduce solar power production. Sulfate injection into the atmosphere could increase acid deposition in the ocean, possibly beyond biological thresholds. Geoengineering may pose unknown stresses on ecosystems and biodiversity. Now, some of these proposed techniques are not easily reversible if the effects are not what were intended. As Newton said, what goes up must come down. Any particulates in the air will eventually fall to the ground on our homes, our businesses, the land, the water, our persons. Farmland covers about 10% of this state. Aquaculture is an important part of the state economy. We are not aware of anyone that has considered, much less studied, the impact of geoengineering on the ocean state's oyster harvest, for example. The economic impact of geoengineering experiments gone awry is completely unknown. <coughs> the consequences of, of deliberately manipulating the climate and the environment are not completely understood. More research and experimentation is underway, and absent legislation or some form of public oversight to monitor and control experimentation, private actors may be free to engage in reckless behavior in the name of science or financial gain. And I'll give you an example. Great. In 2012, an American citizen conducted a geoengineering experiment in ocean fertilization off the west coast of Canada by dumping 100 <coughs> tons of iron sulfate, sulfate into the Pacific Ocean in an effort to trigger a plankton boom and promote salmon restoration. Now, state laws should prohibit this type of activity without authorization, but current laws do not necessarily prevent these activities. It's not clear that geoengineering is prohibited, even uh, regulated by existing federal and state environmental laws. House Bill 611 will guard against careless experimentation and deployment of any such activity and its concomitant risks. House Bill 6011 proposes a sensible method for tracking and assessing the danger and efficacy of any geoengineering activity in the state and for monitoring that activity and its impacts. In that regard, House Bill 6011 is entirely consistent with this state's environmental policies. And this state has vowed to protect air, water, land, and natural resources located within the state from pollution, impairment, and destruction. House Bill 6011 upholds this state's commitment to those policies. Additionally, Bill 611, 6011 is a modest bill. It only requires that anyone proposing to deploy geoengineering technology in the state apply for a license. And by disclosing the proposed project, its scope and methods, 
chemical substances being employed and the qualifications of participants. That's not asking a lot in terms of regulation. It promotes transparency by providing the public with online access to that information and an opportunity to participate in the decision-making process through the hearing. It promotes efficacy by engaging the state's leading experts in environment, health, and agriculture, and natural resources, and emergency management to weigh in on the potential impacts of the proposed activity. House Bill 6011 is not a blanket prohibition on geoengineering, or some, some might argue it should be, but it is a sensible approach to a new technology. The deliberate manipulation of the Earth's atmosphere and climate is real. It is imminent. It raises a host of scientific, political, ethical, and moral concerns, and in light of these concerns, Rhode Island is poised to meet that challenge today and lead on this issue for the sake of its citizens and its environment. Please call the FBI 24-hour tip line at 1-800-CALL-FBI and select option one or visit tips.fbi.gov. So again, FBI's 24-hour tip line at 1-800-CALL-FBI and select option one or visit tips.fbi.gov. All tips will remain confidential. No amount of information is too small to report. Law enforcement will remain on scene until processing of the scene has been completed. We ask that the local community for your patience and your cooperation as we complete this task. Further updates will be shared via this. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 800-618-8255. International callers may reach George by calling their in-country Sprint access number, pressing option 5, and dialing toll-free 800-893-0903. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. From the City of Angels, this is Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Beyond Belief is our television program, and you can watch it by going to that website, beyondbelief.com. Beyondbelief.com, as a matter of fact, this Wednesday, Linda Bolton Howe joins me talking about the holographic universe. It is a gangbuster program, and uh, Linda did a great job with it, and you can watch it exclusively at beyondbelief.com. 144,000 chemicals that have been released in the environment by human activity. The human race does not seem very concerned about its own survival because it's not just the criminal corporations that are causing this problem. It's a population that doesn't want to know and certainly doesn't want to play their part in changing the direction that we are currently heading, a direction that will lead to near-term extinction on our planet. Statistically, it's already unfolding. Time to wake up. Now, on this note as well, on the contamination of our environment, as I stated in the beginning of the show, here's a report, a shocking new report on aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. Confirms this connection. The report states no aluminum, no Alzheimer's disease. That simple. This is from the report. This is perhaps an unexpected conclusion of a new open access paper published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Putting the headlines in context, what is actually being revealed is this, that brain content of aluminum is a catalyst for Alzheimer's disease. In the absence of pathologically significant deposits of aluminum in brain tissue, there would be no acute Alzheimer's disease within a normal lifespan of perhaps 100 years. Support for this conclusion has been building over the last decade and has now been put on an unequivocally firm footing by recent research demonstrating the exceedingly high content of aluminum in brain tissue in individuals who died with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia. There you have it. We've known this, those who've looked at the data for a very long time, we now have science...